Ankh and my aunt. Um, so I pretty much have been gone for a minute. Um, one of the reasons I've been gone is because um, I belong to the Temple of Anu in uh, Newark, New Jersey, and we went away for Rep. One Pet. And uh, Rep. One Pet is the comedic opening of the year or the new year. So um, pretty much. Yeah, after that, just kind of settling and stuff like that. So I figured um, in order for me to get this year started, um, why don't I make a video about what Rep. One Pet is and just talk a little bit about my Tep Rec for this year, uh, share that, and then share setting up my altar just because I haven't done it yet. I'm like two weeks and a couple days late, but I'm finally doing it. So, um, just to start out, like I said, uh, Rep. One Pet is the opening of the year, and um, like I had last time, I have like a little handy dandy uh, PowerPoint because I'm a teacher and I just can't stop that in me. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so essentially what Rep. One Pet is... Um, the ancient comedic people would uh, see the spadet star, um, we call that uh, Cirrus, and um, pretty much once spadet was on the horizon, it was essentially um, the inundation season, and that was the time where the Hapi or the Nile River would flood, and with that flood would come... Um, pretty much abundance, prosperity, you know, uh, opportunity for the food to, or the foods and things like that to um, get the rich silt in the um, ground and stuff like that. So anyways, this is Spadette. So if you've never seen her before, that's her. And that's the actual star. And um, in addition to this, we celebrate the birth of the Neturu. Well, not all of them, but we celebrate the birth of Asar, um, Haru, or Satesh, Aset, and Nebihet. So, if you don't know, these, that is them right there. And, um, so, and plus, if you, I guess you want to educate yourself as far as the story, um, Legends of Egyptian Gods. This book has um, the story of the birth and things like that. And what's I know it's like b a budge book, and you know we don't want to rely on Egyptologists and things like that. But um, the one thing that's good about it is that it has the glyphs right there, um, so you can read the English translation and have the glyphs there. So if you are studying Manu Netter, um, that can be very helpful to just kind of be able to go back and forth. Um, so this year, or at least a tradition with the Temple of Anu, is that we choose a Teprek. So you uh, essentially put your hand in a basket and you receive a scroll that is a symbol of the uh, Neturu, one of the five Neturu, um, and you are supposed to work with that energy for the year. So the top rep that I chose this year is a SAR. So you see, got the black on there. And um, essentially, what a SAR is, um, if you look at Egyptologists, they really just say, oh, he's the god of the dead, and blah, blah. blah. Like, no, nah, that's not uh, how we believe a SAR to be. Um, but if you don't know what a SAR looks like, this is a picture of him right there. Um, so he's usually green faced. He has the Atef crown on. Um, I like this picture <laughs> too, but um, you'll usually see him kind of like uh, just uh, mummified in a way. So um, just to read this particular uh, picture, just because I like it, it says, This is a SAR, your true self, your true entire only and ultimate purpose for being on earth is the resurrection of this indwelling intelligence um, that it may guide your endeavors in life with the same omniscience that it uses to guide your physiological and subconscious mental activities so essentially this whole idea of being able to resurrect yourself being able, being able to rejuvenate yourself um, really 
tune into your higher self. So that's the energy that I'm going to be working on this year. Um, if you notice, um, I have on black. Um, so black is a color of Asar. Green is a color of Asar. Uh, this year, especially with rejuvenation, I'll be having a lot of green drinks, green leafy greens uh, to eat, a lot of salads. Um, for anybody who knows me, salad is like, I to me it's like such a boring food, but um, I'm going to find different ways to um, just really stay within the energy of Asar and making sure that the foods that I eat are reflective of that. Um, I know it's also like green tea is something, uh, pretty much anything green, that's what you want to kind of go for. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, the other thing that I've really been concentrating on this year is um, I tried to, I figured for myself, all right, let me invoke this energy, let me keep this energy with me all the time. So, and one way to do that would be through jewelry. So, um, I got some waist beads. I got some bracelets. Um, I intend on getting some more bracelets, so I figure I'll wear like some on my ankles, some on my arms. Uh, I want to get a necklace um, with the waist beads and stuff. So pretty much, I would kind of want to be just covered um, with this Asar energy. Um, so I figured, just in general, I would share some information as far as where I got those things. So. Um, these are the waist beads that I got, so you can like kind of see them in general. So, and I also kind of, even though Maat is more of like a blue color, I'm trying to infuse her because again, the idea of a sar, but I want to attain a sar within the vein of Maat. I want to um, cultivate myself to maintain my art at all times. So I kind of, even though I'm going to be built, not building, but I'm going to be setting up another altar for um, my art. I'm also going to have one, as you'll see later, um, I'm going to have one for Asar that I'm, I'm going to work with every day. And then the my art one is just going to be another one, just as another reminder is what I'm working towards. So um, the bracelets that I got, um, this one in particular here, this is Moss, Moss Agate, or Agate, I'm not sure how to say it. Um, this one here that I also have, it's Hematite, Tiger's Eye, and, um, oh gosh, Onyx. And then I have another one here, which I'm trying not to break because I keep like putting it over my Fitbit. So this one is black tourmaline, and then it also has like the um, clear quartz with black tourmaline in it. So um, I'm just trying a lot of protective energy, a lot of things that kind of get rid of negative energy. Um, being a teacher, and I'm not going to get into that too much, but um, you know, you have to deal with a lot of different people's energy. So and. Um, the message for this year, or at least one part of it, is talking about how the Ankh is upside down. And, um, like, basically, what is stopping you in general? So I figured, you know, one thing is I really, really stress out a lot, and I stress out um, just watching other people, what they do, how certain people are operating and things like that. And I always have to, or at least this year, I want to constantly remind myself, like, it is my job to maintain my, it is my job to um, stay on, um, or stand on my square, as they say. And um, anybody else, whatever it is they're doing, you know, that is not to deter me from doing what is right and what I know is right. Um, and not give in to like that negativity because I often find myself, you know, oh, why am I even trying? This isn't even worth it. And, you know, just kind of falling for those negative type of thoughts. Um, I know even just within certain relationships, friendships, family, familial relationships and stuff like that, which I know, um, I think well, that's two moons ago. It was a, a lot about uh, familial energy, so like healing that. So um, just kind of those old wounds that come up from family as they do or friends or whomever uh, we have in our lives. 
and just sometimes like, oh, I'm not going to call them, what's the point? Or, oh, they're just going to be this way, what's the point? So just kind of like falling into that type of negativity, and that's what I'm trying to stay away from this year. Um, because it's stressful, and um, just to kind of share a little bit, like over the past year, I've become so unbelievably stressed that like I have panic attacks, that like my chest is tight, and, and you know, like I can literally feel the stress, and I just don't want that anymore. I don't want to be a part of it. I also don't want to have like an F it attitude, because that's also not within my eye. So just try to trying to cultivate that um, within me and not being so black and white. Ha ha, Asar, black and white, I made a joke. Anyway, um, I don't want to be that way. I want to be able to kind of move within the gray and stuff like that. But I won't be able to do that unless I keep this presence of mind, unless I keep myself um, focused. So again, that's why I wanted to just kind of share setting up my altar. Um, oh, there's uh, something else that I did. I've been like buying a whole bunch of stuff to try to get ready for this. So I figured I would share that. Um, so the first thing is I started reading this book, Awakening, and I know it says Osiris but you know hey what can I do um so a co-worker gave this to me I want to say maybe a year ago a year and a half ago and I'm like ah, I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it and he's given me a couple of books and I'm like ah, I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it and then what had happened was I get so bogged down with everyday life that I just didn't get to it so I'm just like you know what I went through I have like all these books on my bookshelf and let me finally do this so I started reading this book and it says it's um, the book of coming forth by day um, the when I read this particular book I I'd like the way the, the guy translated it um, it makes it very relatable a very contemporary language um, I know that's not necessarily popular with a lot of people people want um, very stick with the original language which I can appreciate that but as far as just understanding, to me, I find that the first step for understanding is just have the contemporary language, have it there so I can understand it, think about it, pray on it, meditate on it. And then I can move to the original language and just kind of tweak and, um, I guess, get an even deeper understanding and connection. So um, I definitely recommend this book. There's one chapter in particular that I really like. I mean, I'm only on page 65 right now. But, um, and I like writing in my books, but like chapter four, um, it's called The Speeches. I really, really like that. Um, it really speaks to me. So like, just for example, it says, may my heart witness what my hands create, the words I utter, the word, the worlds I think. Um, and I think that's, I underline that particularly because I just think of to myself like, all right, when I'm in those negative spaces, what are like mantras or what are things that I could constantly just put in my mind to kind of dispel the negativity that's going on around me. Um, and I, that to me, like that particular verse has a lot to do with talking about, um, my inner divinity and what I can cultivate and make in my own life and not necessarily have to be at the whim of other people um, being in control and when I say in control I mean like in divine control um, there's another part I like it's very long <laughs> so I'm not gonna read the whole thing um, there, this one I really liked also, I'm sorry. Um, I remember the names of my ancestors. I speak the names of those I love. I speak their names and they live again. May I be so well loved and remember in truth. May the Neturu hear my name. May I do work with my hands worth remembering. So I really like that verse in particular. And, and I made like a little kind of note for myself that, um, I want to kind of incorporate that within my libations so that um i don't know i just really like the wording and not to be lazy but why reinvent the wheel so um like i said i really enjoyed this book in particular again it's awakening osiris 
please pardon the Egyptology, but I really like that one. So if you would like to work with Asar, definitely recommend that one. Um, another book, which I saw uh, someone else at our Rep When Pets retreat and gentleman was reading, and this is a really, I didn't realize it was this big until I got it in the mail, but this one is calling Remembering Osir. Uh, so that's it. It is, like I said, it is quite a thick book, but I just got it today, and um, he, there are like a lot of different prayers, there are a lot of different, there's a lot of information in there, so I guess I'll have to report back later on as far as what I get out of it, or um, just in general with my SAR work, um, but I guess just to kind of talk about the table of contents, uh, it talks about the, uh, it says, he uses um, Osiris, but Osarian tradition, like the way he pronounces it, but it's spelled like the Egyptologist, so, mm -hmm. but Kemetic spirituality, who and what is Netter, uh, Ma'at family, working with Madhu Netter, Oset and Haru, uh, man's spiritual journey, Satesh, Heka, um, putting up a shrine, so like a lot of those themes I thought looked good when I uh, looked through the table of contents, so we will see, we will see um, how helpful this book is, um, so yeah, so as far as an altar, um, I know there are all different types of ways of setting up altars, um, different purposes and things like that, so, um, Essentially, I just figured I would set it up, and if people had questions, but at least it's out there for people to see uh, how I do it, and maybe that'll help people in their spiritual work and practice. So, um, yeah, here we go. <laughs> The first thing that I have is um, what's called an altar kit. We sell those um, at the Temple of Anu. So it's kind of like the, if you never had an altar before, like what you can do. So it comes with like a piece of cloth. So since the SARS colors are like black and green, um, you can start with that. So, and we also have like candles. I'm a big fan of candles because I'm very visual. So we have like the Asar candle. And um, there's like, obviously you don't leave it unattended, but it has like a explanation on the back. So known as the first Nisut of Kemet, Asar often seen holding the heck or crook and Nkaka flail, which are the Kemetic symbols of authority and kingship. Asar represents the potential that each of us possesses for spiritual rejuvenation through the command of righteous thoughts, words, and deeds. Asar reminds each of us to aspire to self-mastery, especially in those situations when it seems an impossible task, because this is where our greatest strength lies. He must first hold supreme authority over, I'm sorry, we must first hold supreme authority over ourselves if we wish to achieve success, abundance, and prosperity. So that's what all that says right there. So... Um, again, and at the bottom it says regeneration, stillness, and knowledge of self. So I have that. Um, I bought myself a cauldron, which I, I really don't want to pick it up because it's hot because I put um, a charcoal thing in it. Um, which actually I'm using resin. So this is like the one that I bought. Um, it's for health and healing, so I figured that was within the lines of um, a SAR. So I'll put a little bit. Um, another thing that comes in the um, altar kit from Temple is they, give, they do give you incense. So this one, they give you Egyptian musk. Uh, original. This is by... Mohan. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, so I just figured I, I didn't I didn't want to use it right now. 
just because the um, incense holder that I have, I, I don't care for it really. Um, I need to get a new one. So you get some oil to wear that is pretty much uh, charged and blessed and each Neturu comes with like a different scent. Um, as I had mentioned before, uh, Asar is like the lord of regeneration, so pretty much anything green is good. So they gave us like green tea and lemongrass. Um, you also get a crystal within it. So um, if you're really into crystal work or just want to use it in your meditations and things like that. Um, I am not sure which one this is. I need to ask. But I'm quite sure it's either black tourmaline or some type of onyx or obsidian. One of those, but I'm pretty sure it's black tourmaline because that's what it looks like now that I'm looking at it. Um, so, besides the other candle, again, I'm very visual, but they have like the, um, the scented candle, so I like to have these around my house. Um, just smelling good. Um, so again... Dun, da, 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 moment of truth. I went and I got an Asar statue. And um, pretty much every Requiem pet, um, I have, or at least for the past couple years, I keep getting new Neturu. And uh, this is my first time getting Asar. So um, I had to go out and buy an Asar statue. So. Oh, oh no! We need to like get a scissor. But anyway, sorry, I'm like unwrapping it off camera. Okay. There's some of it. So I actually have my Haru or like sitting off to the side because I never I haven't put him away yet. I have like this uh big bin of, I guess you would say, spiritual stuff that I stick all of that stuff in, and I just didn't get a chance to put him away. So, this is my Asar. Um, in a way, I kind of wanted an Asar that was standing. Um, well, no, let me rephrase that. At first, I thought about getting two, and then I was like, okay, Minette, you're doing too much. <laughs> So I wanted one that was sitting because I like the idea of uh, that visual of Asar assuming his throne, um, the union between Asar and Aset. So I really liked that imagery. But then when I saw this statue of Asar, I thought it was so powerful. Even though, like, you notice they have his feet wrapped up, but they're usually, like, in the pictures, they're, like, wrapped up all together. So that was, like, a little off for me. But I just thought he looked really regal. And, like, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just really like this one. I thought it was a little different. So this is my going to be my Asar on my altar for this year. And um, once I kind of go off... Um, camera and turn the live off. I'm going to sage all of this, but I figured I would just show everybody. Um, oh, I got both. I'm sorry. There's a, there are questions. I got the statue from, um, at first I looked on eBay and then I found it on Amazon last year. Actually, I could show you her reward. So this was Haru Or from last year. Um, like I said, I need to put him away back in his box and stuff like that. But that's my Haru Or from last year. Um, so yeah, both of them came from Amazon. Um, I know there are different black-owned shops. Um, I just haven't been able to find one that's close and close, essentially. Um, all the ones that I know of are kind of further away. So, um, but yeah, both of them came from uh, Amazon. So I know when we're setting up an altar, you want to have the different elements. So I obviously already have fire, but just when I first learned about setting up altars, I, um, I only 
Jesus was big on like the white candles, so the purity and things like that. So um, I used to have tall white pillar candles, but um, let me move a little closer. Um, ooh, okay. Um, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> oh, I used to have tall pillar candles, but I noticed because my altar is right next to the window and the sun beats on them, that they the wax starts separating from the glass. So I this year I'm gonna try tea lights and we'll see what happens. Um, so I have uh, two feathers for or ostrich feathers. Um, like I said before, I'm going to set up a ma'at altar, so I'm only going to use one for a sar. Um, in my mind, and I obviously if you set your altar up, don't put the feather next to the fire, but this is just for all intensive purposes. Um, right there. I'm going to stick it. Um, so I like to put the my odd feather on my altar again just as a constant reminder of what it is I'm working towards and again what the Asar energy is working towards. Um, so Earth, if you notice, I have my um, aloe plant back here. I stink at keeping flowers alive and plants in general. So I stick to cactus and succulents and things like that just because for some reason I'm good at keeping those alive. So I'm not that bad. So um, my earth is back there. Fire, fire. Um, so I have different bowls. So I have this clear bowl. I like to use this as my offering. Um, so last year when I had Haru Or, I would cut a piece of ginger and I would put it in the clear. Uh, bowl just as my offering and then you know once it kind of starts uh, shriveling and stuff like that you know I'll either put it into a smoothie in the morning or um, you know and just put a new piece in there um, I have these three white bowls so one would be for water one would be for hessemin or um, what do you call that baking soda not baking powder and then the third one is you mix both of them. So that's like your air. Um, because when they mix, um, you know, bubbles up and stuff like that. So hessemin water and then a mix of both. Um, oh, so if you, again, are into crystals and things like that, you could put your crystal um, on your altar. So I have, like I said, the one from the altar kit. I have a couple of quartz crystals that I would also put in that. The idea is uh, I use the pointed ones and I try to make like a triangle. So the idea is I want to take that energy and as I'm sitting in front of my altar, I have, it's like pointing that energy towards me. So uh, yeah, uh, I like to put my actual Teprec roll on my altar just um, to keep it charged, to keep it within the energy. Um, now, this, this is just uh, something else I like to do in particular. Um, I want to create a vision board. So usually I'll get like one of those tri-fold types and I'll either put it in the back or I'll put it in front. Um, I haven't made mine this year yet. Maybe I'll do that on live too, I don't know. Um, but I like to, again, have that visual of what am I working towards? What is it that I'm coming to Asar in? What is it that I'm giving to Asar over this year? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, as far as sage, um, so I have this old sage. I'm going to get a new one because I just don't, um, I don't want to keep using the same one for the new altar. Um, so that's why it's off to the side. I'm not going to put it up there, but usually like I have a little gold holder and I'll like stick it over here um, and let that burn as I'm burning the other incenses. So I'm purifying as well as invoking simultaneously. Um, oh, this is, <laughs> this is the last thing that I have. I have my singing bowl. So I, like, I usually leave this off to the side, just in general. I do like to do uh, some meditations and things like that. Um, I find that working with 
Um, when I am doing meditation, I like doing bells, chimes, singing bowls. It's something about the vibration that kind of also works for me. So just as a suggestion, um, yeah, just one of those things to try. Everybody's different. The tools, you know, some tools are more effective for some people than others. Um, wow, that went really fast. I thought that was going to take a little longer. So yay that it didn't. Uh, <laughs> so, um, that's really it. That's all I have for today. I'm like trying to sneak in here without being all crazy looking. Um, so I figured next week I'll be working with the book. I figured, um, not for nothing, I really like the idea of the Raspy Rolls, uh, read aloud challenge. So, um, and that's something that we've kind of been doing here at home. So I figure maybe next week I'll get, I'll either read some of the Awakening of Sar or the other book, whichever one is kind of better, and then maybe we can share and learn together. So, all right, that's all I got. Shamiyam Hatat.